Every one of you has a story to tell. And in some, it just happens to be more visible. We are so honored to have today with us McKenna Wrights. McKenna, I cannot wait to introduce the rest of the world, even more of the world to you, and to hear of your strength and everything you have been through. Welcome to the Abundant Mind Show. Thank you so much for having me. It is such an honor to be here talking with you. It is it's really very special to me. Well, thank you. So you, and again, you guys, this lady is absolutely <laughs> incredible. You know, I was thumbing through this uh, magazine. I don't know if you guys have heard about it. It's, there's a magazine called Women's Day. And for those of you just listening, I have the magazine and, and I was just thumbing through it. And not only are you on the front cover on the, on the index, right? Not only are you there, there is a whole spread on who you are. How surreal is this? So we're going to, I want to talk about this for a second and let's dive into how we got here. So this just came out. This is hot off the shelves. You guys, this is everywhere. Um, I've seen this. This is everywhere. I've, I mean, everyone sells Women's Day. Um, and man, how yeah. inspirational is that? So I got to watch a video of you opening this up. Can you share, could you share the emotions that you were feeling in the moment and maybe this, the lessons that were going through your head as you were listening of what got you here? Oh, wow. Uh, you know, it came out literally a week ago. And the weekend before it came out, I was in Nashville hanging out with Megan Murphy, who happens to be editor in chief. Yep. And I've never met her before. And uh, that was my first time ever meeting her. And she had actually uh, the factory send a box straight from the factory to the hotel to for everyone, all of these 15 amazing women to get a copy. And so the copies that I have don't even have the barcodes on them. That's how straight from the wow. factory they were. And yeah. And so she takes me to uh, her friend's hotel room where they work. Cause I came in late and out in the hallway, she hands me the magazine and she starts videotaping me. And, you know, just like the beginning of this be happening to me and what I had to understand is that, that anything's possible, right? When we allow ourselves and give ourselves permission to believe in ourselves the action and the thoughts are going to follow with it. And in that moment, not only am I opening up one of the most, the largest circulated magazine in the world, I'm opening it up and I see myself in the table of contents. I am standing in front of the editor in chief. And that was just, and she's smiling and she's got tears running down my eyes. I'm just speechless. I have no words coming out of my mouth. And then to see the full spread, uh, it was, it was magical. It truly was magical uh, to see how far I've come uh, in the past a little over six years of how far I've come to allowing the world to see me authentic and to see me bald. And it's, it's still, it's still surreal to me. And I'm still, uh, I'm not trying to believe that it's happening to me, but it is because I put myself in that position. Thank you so much for sharing that. You know, I mean, how surreal would that be for you? You know, because you are an inspiration to millions, millions, McKenna. And to feel and to see that actually, I, I could see that click in you like, mm -hmm. this is in every single supermarket, every single place in the entire world. This is in, this is going to be, this is everywhere. And for you to literally stand tall for who you are, and for literally being as, as uh, for being transparent and being vulnerable and being powerful. I absolutely love that. And I, and I would love to be able to talk about this a little bit more. Um, you know, and so we, we have some people near to our, to, in our lives that have alopecia and there are different versions and different types and degrees of it. And so you were diagnosed with alopecia universalis. Is that correct? Correct. And that was about six yeah, years it, ago. Yeah. In November 15, November, 2015, um, I, we took our family pictures. Uh, my youngest was only four months old, so she has never known me with hair. And we took our family pictures and a day later I saw them and I looked at my hair and I'm like, wow, it's substantially thin. And I was like, that, you know, I didn't really think too much of it. By the end of the week, I'm sitting in the shower with my hands full of hair. And wow. within three weeks or so, 90% of my hair was gone. 
And that's how quick it went. And uh, by within six months, my eyebrows and my eyelashes had fallen out. And probably within eight months, every single hair in my body was gone. And it, it went quick, it, you know, but in hindsight, I'm glad it went so quickly, you know, just ripping that bandaid off because if it oh. had dragged on any longer, I don't know if I'd still be the same point. You know, it's it just that quick transition in the midst of the storm, you don't understand. Uh, but when you're outside that storm and you're seeing the sunshine and you're seeing the rainbows and the birds and the butterflies, you can look back and be thankful. Um, and that's why, you know, I tell so many people that it's okay to have that grace period. It's okay to feel down and feel weak because that's when you're most strong. And, you know, whatever storm anyone is fighting, I promise you, like, you will get through it. But in that moment, you're not going to be able to see it and understand it. But as long as we have that strength of a mindset, you're still going to be able to get out of bed every day. And that's what's most important. My mom always asked me, McKenna, how do you still get out? Get up every day. I said, mom, there's no other choice. There's no other choice. I have two daughters that are watching my every move. I have a family to take care of. I have students to, that are relying on me every single day. I have to get up. And, you know, that's what allowed me to continue fighting with my journey. You know, I, I love that instead of shrinking, you decided to stand tall. And now, and, and like you said, that's very true. How many of us go through moments where we think, why me? We think I'd be better off such and such, such and such. And it, the mind rationalizes, but you decided, you made the choice in that moment. Are there moments in your life before, so I'd like to talk before this happened. I mean, obviously you had an identity, you're McKenna, right? But before mm -hmm. this happened, there had to have been an inner strength and clearly you learned lessons from this. But can you think of any moments in your life that prepared you for this, whether you thought about it or not? Are there any moments where you found that if I hadn't had these moments or these people in my life who had who had love for me, who had a strong mindset, never gave up. Is there is there are there any lessons or people in your life that helped you to get through this, whether you realize it at the time or not? I am very fortunate that that um sorry about the dog. You know, this is called real life. This is real um, life. I'm very fortunate that I have a this is real life. Like we have a bay window, the kids are riding bikes, and that means we have a happy life, which is so great. Before um, you go, I, I, this is one of the things I loved about you. When when I first saw you with you know Chris uh, Winfield and and Jen Gottlieb, like literally, like you are authentic. You guys, like this is she's not in a New York penthouse. Like this is <laughs> she's not in a she's not in a mansion in L.A. This is this is a working mama who is a teacher who is who is using her life to help inspire the world. Like I said, we'll probably have kids running in the background and dogs barking, and this is life, and I love it. Yeah, so the mini quarantine puppy. We got a quarantine puppy. Well, she's two now. Mini golden doodle. I think everyone got a golden doodle. But anyways, yes. um, no, I, I had a strong support system at home. I still do. I have, my grandparents grew up during the Great Depressions. They were considered the greatest generation. Uh, fought in World War II, uh, you know, born between 1900 to 1925 and lived for 80 to 90 years and to be able to see what they had, they went through and never felt entitled and fought for everything that they had, they worked for plus defending our country. You know, my grandfather fought in world war two for four years. I mean, you, that, there's nothing more, more strength than that. And then having my parents be the baby boomers and watching them completely change our society and the androgynous role that my mom and dad played in my life of blending those female male characteristics of empowering women just as much as men and that there's those equal parts and that strength. And sports have always played a huge role in my life too. I, you know, I, played softball for 10 years. I played competitive mindset. I am relentless. I'm never going to let anything hold me back. Um, did alopecia attempt to? Absolutely. But I wasn't going to allow it to be because I allowed alopecia to find me for far too long. Uh, my daughter's first Christmas, I hardly took any pictures of myself with her. Uh, and I noticed myself holding back. And I didn't want 
to live that life. I didn't want to be that example for my daughters. And so not only was it my daughters, but then also my husband, my husband is my rock. He said to me as I was losing my hair, McKenna, it's just hair. And at that moment, I wanted to punch him in the face. I'm like, Greg, like, it is so much more than hair. Like for women it is subconsciously, we're told that our hair is our identity. And so I literally thought that when my hair was falling out strand by strand, my identity was being ripped away from me. And for my husband to say, McKenna, it's just hair. I was so upset, but it took me until probably, probably a couple months ago for me to understand that my husband loves me beyond my hair. But it was me that was holding myself back. I was my own worst enemy because I was so worried what other people thought of me. I was so worried with how I was still going to live that I wasn't able to see outside of my bubble during that time. And so that support system and that mindset that I you know, received from my grandparents and my parents and from my husband and from athletics you know, is the true reason why I'm proud today. Thank you for that. And, you know, the moments leading before that, the, the lessons learned, if you look back, when you're in a moment of crisis, look at your life. You are stronger than you think you are. You have a strong support mm-hmm. system. You are loved. You are cared for. The world's exactly what you think it is. You have to look for those lessons. And I love that you were able to see those lessons. And when is it that you had, you had shared, and you shared pretty vocally and, and very openly, that the Under Armour product, mm-hmm. right? Um, mm-hmm. That you had felt that you know wearing your hat was literally like armor for you. You you could feel mm-hmm. uh, that you could you know be a little bit more yourself. You could come out a little bit. Can you share the moment, if there was a moment where you realized, no more. I don't need. Mm-hmm. It. I don't need you. Is there a moment? You're gonna make me cry because um, that hat was my saving grace mm-hmm. for four years. Um, I went to bed wearing that hat until the lights were off and then I would take it off because I didn't even want my husband to see me bald. Like that went on for months and I would be up at our lake house for 4th of July and my mom would be like, take the hat off, just let your head be free. And I'm like, I can't because it gave me that sense of comfort, that sense of normalcy that I just needed. I wanted to be able to walk into the grocery store and not be stared at. I wanted to be able to just live like, and I wasn't able to, and that hat allowed me just to go work out. It allowed me just a little bit of freedom because then, you know, when I wasn't wearing a hat, I was wearing wigs and I was at uh, the, I went to the national LP share Ariata foundations national conference in Seattle in June of 2019. So luckily right before 2020 right hits before. and right before And my mom went with me and that was my first time I was around other alopecians. And for the first time, I didn't feel like a woolly mammoth. Like you'd never seen a woolly mammoth. And I felt like I was the only one who existed. And then all of a sudden there are all these baldies around. And on the first day of conference, I'm walking around jeans, shirt, dress shirt on, just like what I'm wearing now with my hat on. Because again, I still wasn't comfortable with me. And I actually just saw a picture. um, The next morning I went to work out great beautiful workout room everyone's working out there's some people wearing hats there's some bald there's people with hair everything and i said to myself today's the day like today's the day today i'm going to walk out of my hotel room bald and i went up to my room and i said mom i'm doing it i'm gonna i'm gonna not wear a hat today she's like are you sure are you sure i said no no but i have to like there's no better time than being surrounded by 100 percent support system. And I got ready and my mom was still getting ready. And I grabbed my, my bag. I threw the hat in as my, like my pacifier, it's my security blanket. And I opened up the door. I walked down the hallway, took a deep breath, wanted to throw up, but didn't. I walked to the elevator and I'm just like, okay, I just want to ride down and just kind of handle it myself. We stopped at every floor on the way down and people kept walking on and it was terrifying. But when that door opened on the last on the bottom floor I realized I survived like no one looked at me differently every and people who saw me with a head on they were so proud of me and every day got a a little little bit easier and easier and I made that decision that that school year in August 
I started the school year off bald, no wig. I, I started off coaching without a wig, without a hat on. And it was scary. And I was so worried what other people are going to think of me, but it was me, you know, it was me standing in my own way. And I, I haven't worn a wig since 2020 and since December, 2020 or 2019, actually. And, um, you only see me wearing a hat when I'm either on the beach to cover my head or working out because this is me. And I'm, it took me six years to finally love me and love my reflection and almost 40 years to find that and discover that self-love. But it's because of that moment of stepping outside that comfort zone that I created and no one else did, but it took me four years to get out of that comfort zone. Wow. So you I know that's a little long winded, but. <laughs> but that you guys, I, I hope you understand, you know, you listening that there are going to come times in your life where you had your identity tied to something that, and so be it if it was superficial or whatever it could be. And when that's stripped from you, you have to identify what is it? If, if this, if my health goes, if this, if my hair goes, who am I? You're McKenna freaking rights. That mm -hmm. is awesome. I mean, I think in the song like the, uh, the greatest showman, like when I first saw you, I listened to that <laughs> soundtrack over and over again, seriously, over and over again. And I was like, this is this lady. Like this, this is, is me. me. This is this me. This is me. I listened to it three times today. Three times. <laughs> <Did you> really? <laughs> I listened to it while working out because it just it's oh yeah. I mean it's just like it's not a reminder. It's just me saying, Hell yeah, this is me. Like yep. you know, words are gonna tear you down, but you're gonna get right back up. And that's you know, that's the biggest thing. And I live by a quote, the problem is not the problem. The problem is the attitude about the problem. By Captain Jack Sparrow, the Pirates Caribbean, of course. But if you, you know, we are so focused on, as a society on the problem and trying to be in control of the problem and trying to solve the problem and fix the problem when there's some things that are just out of our control. It's out of our control. And when it, what is in our control is our attitude about the situation. And once you switch that mindset, oh, life is beautiful. I love that you shared that because one of my one of my favorite quotes his name is Russell M. Nelson uh, in our church and he says that that the happiness in our lives has little to do with the circumstances in our lives and everything to do with the focus in our lives everything mm -hmm. to do with the focus and we hear this right I guarantee you heard this ten thousand times before you went through what you went through but if we could learn mm -hmm. that lesson and understand that this is me this is who I am. I want to be a genuinely good person. We're going to make mistakes and we have kids and dogs are going to bark and we have, you know, we're going to win games and lose games, but you're going to stand up and be the best person that you can be. Would you have ever thought that this is where you'd be? And I know your goal isn't fame. Your goal is to change, help change lives, help inspire, help, help people to understand that they are more than enough, that they're, that, that this can be a superpower, that who they are is, is absolutely everything. How does it make you feel that, uh, that people are going to look to you? That, that, that do look to you. I mean, because like you said, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a, I'm a coach, I'm a teacher, but you are the American dream. You are the type of person that I want my children to look up to, that to say, this is a person who's been through difficult things and look how they shine. Look at this power that they've developed. Look at this power that they had that was uncovered through something that could have been re seen as tragic. How, how does that make you feel? You know, I am just living the life that I've always wanted to live of providing value to others, of empowering others, whether it's before my hair loss, during my hair loss. And, you know, now, you know, I became a teacher for a reason. I've been coaching varsity volleyball for 17 years for a reason to give back and to provide value and to, you know, I don't coach for wins and losses. I take these 13, 14 year old female, young females who come into my program. And the goal is to build them up to be these strong, independent women that when they leave my program, they can go and understand that the possibilities are endless. And the fact that, you know, a wrench was thrown into my life, I had two choices. I can either, you know, just shrivel up and, you know, kind of exit myself from my normal spotlight life or, you know, I can stand there as I was losing my hair in November of 2015, 
and wearing a headband to cover up my bald spots as it receded back. And I made the decision to talk, say to my AP psych students, my hair is falling out. We don't know why. And I'm going to start to look different. And if I would never have done that, I don't think I would be where I'm at today. Wow. But I have to be transparent. I have to show that we are all human, regardless of how many followers you have or how much money you have. You know, we're all human. We all have feelings. We're all climbing a mountain and every single mountain is different. And so I want my students, my athletes and my daughters to know that they need to continue climbing, that they're strong enough to climb and there's going to be tough peaks to be, you know, to overcome. But I want to, you know, show them that if I can get through this, you can get through it. And I just, you know, I think a big reason why I walk out proud and bald is because I want people to just see me and feel empowered that, damn, you know what? She's gone through something and she's still with standing there with a smile on her face. I can get through this too. And, you know, and nothing's changed. It's just being a good human being of providing that value of just putting others welfare above your own. And that just empowers you at the same time to continue fighting and getting through every challenge that life throws you at you. You know, with, with as many people in the United States, um, and there's more and more every day, the, so many people are being diagnosed with autoimmune um, challenges of, 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 of many kinds. And there are millions and millions and millions and millions of people diagnosed with this every day. And one thing I've learned, and I would like to see what your thoughts are on this. I see people who have physical challenge, physical ailments, people who've lost arms, been in accidents, and they all tend to say the same thing that they realize that it wasn't their body that holds them back in life. And I'd like to hear what you think is, what is it that really holds us back? Cause you could say, well, you know, I, I, my hair was my, it was part of who I am or Hey, my arm that I had was part of who I am. What would you say is what truly holds us back when Christ our mindset, mindset, our mindset hand, you know, absolutely. It is, you know, learning how to deal with, uh, setbacks. It's learning how to deal with losses. And when we lose a volleyball match, I tell my, my players, we, you have to fail in order to learn how to succeed. I know that's very cliche, but you have to fail because that failure is going to open your eyes to what we need to work on and what we can become stronger in. And that loss is only going to be productive and effective if we learn and become stronger from it and grow from it. And that is every setback, every challenge, but it takes time. And so when I'm teaching my students who are 16, 17, 18 years old, who have the world, feel like the world's coming at them, you know, being able to expose my world to them a little bit more and for them to be able to sit back and like, you know what, you know, just expanding their bubble a little bit more is so important. That's why we need to share our stories. That's why we need to continue uh, supporting one another unconditionally because we can't hide and that's what we want to do. And that's, um, you know, survival of the fittest. We need to hide. We can't have that stigma of a mental, you know, health issue or a physical health issue or whatever it may be. Remove the stigma, get rid of it, be human mm. because then that mindset is going to be able to reframe it into a gift and opportunity as I've been able to, as you have been able to, as so many have been able to, but it's all about that mindset and you have to continue working on it every single day. It's you're right. It's an everyday thing. It's not a, it's not a, it's not an end destination. It's a journey. What does it mean to McKenna rise to be human? What does it mean to be human? And you're, I mean, cause I see you and I see a powerful, vulnerable, <laughs> empowering woman who loves unconditionally who would give everything to help uplift someone else. But what is your definition? What does it mean to be human? We all have feelings, <laughs> but first, you know, thank you. I, that those words mean a lot to me. Um, to be human shows weakness. It sh shows, you know, things that we're not good at. Yes. And yes. that's what we have to do because that's why we, you and I are great together because you have a strength that is my weakness and vice versa. And that's why you need to team up with people 
and le continue learning from one another, regardless if you're a CEO of a Fortune 500 company or a junior in high school and everything in between, you have to learn from one another uh, because life's going to throw you curveballs. I have curveballs every single day. I have a barking dog. Like that's called being human that yeah. life is not perfection. Life oh. is just surviving sometimes. And that's what I'm doing today. And being able to talk with you, that's called being human. <laughs> I, I, I love I love how transparent because so many people think of a fairy tale when they think of people who've been through it and they, they struggled at one point, but now they no longer struggle. We struggle. We you know, like every time I eat, it's like my shirt says, hmm, I want a taste of that. And I spill on my, you know, I spill on my shirt. You know, this is reality, right? <laughs> but you said something that I think is so important. You taught, you, you're teaching two lessons to me that, that I've never thought of in this way before. You're teaching your girls, you're teaching your, your, your players, you know, you're teaching them how to, you know, to set up, how to spike, right? And you're teaching them how to read other players. You're teaching, hey, when they line up this way, it's coming more likely mm -hmm. over here. You're teaching them to see the playing field. And you just taught me an incredible lesson that setbacks can truly be setups. It can truly mm -hmm. be setting you up. And if you know what a curveball looks like, you can neck that you can knock that thing over the stinking wall if you know what's coming. Mm -hmm. But people tend to really understand this in sports, but not in life. We hear it. What is it that people have to do now that you are on this side of the coin and you get to talk to, I mean, people who've been through so much mentally, physically, emotionally, had it all, lost it all, got it all again. What is it that truly you find finally clicks for somebody once they get it? Not just once they've had a problem, but people have said, you know, I learned, like you said, I learned from my grandparents. I learned from so-and-so. What is it that we need? What is it that, that, that we need to implement to let it click so we can then make setbacks become setups? Huh. Uh, letting go. Letting go of fear. Letting go of wow. expectations. Uh, you know, that I believe that everyone is put on this earth for something and Things have to happen for our eyes to be opened. And for, for a couple of years in my journey, I kept saying alopecia has given me my purpose. But what I truly believe is that my purpose has always been there. But alopecia has opened up my eyes to it. Got it. But my fear has held me back for so long, not allowing the what ifs, the fear of failure and the fear of success and the imposter syndrome and the FOMO you know, throwing that all in there, let go. You just have to let go and take a deep breath and enjoy the moment. I love that. That is absolutely reality right there because we, we, all, we all are going to go to bed tonight. All of us are going to wake up in the morning tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And what, what is the difference between when you wake up and you, your first two steps are thank you. I'm so happy to be up. And the other steps are, are the, the, the next uh, decision is I need to sleep two more hours, <laughs> you know. Um, and, and each of us battle those things because that's part of being human. That's part of it. What are the small things you do every day? Um, your, your, you know, your, your, your mind routine, your night routine, your morning routine. What are the decisions you make? Because like you said, this isn't a decision that happened six years ago and now you got it. This is a decision you have to make and you said it, what? Every single day. What are the voices? What are the mantras? What are the things you say? What are the things you read, you listen to? What are the things you do within your family um, that give you this strength to take each step with purpose? I surround myself with empowering, supportive, encouraging people. It is all about surrounding with positivity and eliminating the negativity, um, especially when it comes to social media. You make the choice on who you follow, who you're friends with, and how long you're going to scroll. And for me, when I'm on social media, I want to be inspired. I want to connect with friends. I want to see their cute puppies and their families and see my former you know, high school teammates and college teammates and what's going on in their life. I don't want to hear about people complaining about the traffic because guess what? Everyone can complain about the traffic. I want to be around people who are going to create more positive neuronal connections for me than negative. And so first off, it's who you surround yourself with. And I truly believe that people come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Uh, I wake up and have my alarm set at 4.45 a.m. every single morning during the work week. 
and I get up and I go work out like that is me time. And there are times where I keep hitting the snooze button and saying, okay, just a couple more minutes, but then I get up, you know, again, that's being human. I'm not one who's just going to pop up and be ready to go. Uh, but that's my time to focus on me because then the rest of the time from 615 until I go to bed is for everyone else. And, you know, to make sure that my girls are strong and, you know, fed and loved and my students are taken care of and that my kids are getting to volleyball and softball and soccer and Girl Scouts and all of that. Um, and so it's waking up and getting a good workout in for me and, you know, listening to good books while I'm working out or listening to TED Talks or, um, or working out with others that are going to, you know, motivate me. And then, you know, I get to decide every single day, is it going to be a good day or a bad day? You make that decision right when you wake up. And there's no other way but to have a good day and to go all in. And if you're all in, get out of bed and you, you move to the couch, I applaud you because I've had many of those days, but I got out of bed. And so whatever you do, go all in. But remember, you're all in is going, that definition is going to change daily. But giving it whatever you have and being relentless about it is going to bleed into those actions and those beliefs are going to follow those actions. So I think those three are the most important things to me in my life because then it just brings me so much positivity and those, I'm all about neuronal connections and because it bleeds yes. into and is contagious and how you treat other people and how you open up the doors for other people and how you just say thank you and just say hi with a smile and mean it. Uh, and that can change someone else's life. You know, saying thank you is is one of the most transformational things that anyone could ever do. Mm -hmm. It is one of the most powerful mm -hmm. phrases to say thank you because it there is a power with those words. Um, I, I am so grateful that we've been able to meet. I am so grateful to have heard your story and to see how you live your life. And I want to thank you for teaching us on these incredible lessons that setbacks can be setups, that letting go and moving forward, surrounding yourself with people who are 100% there for you, who 100% care for you. In, in, in our life, we have a lot of people who are who feed us and people who bleed us. And mm -hmm. we're definitely an accumulation of the top people we hang out with, you know, not only at home, but at work and, and um, in social settings. We're an accumulation of those people and you can choose to elevate yourself, which will only elevate those around you. You are an absolute inspiration, McKenna. Support this incredible lady. Buy the Women's Day magazine. Read about her. Um, your website is www.mckennawrites.com. And then uh, go ahead and spell it out for us. And then let us know where on, on ev wherever everyone consumes social media, where do we find you? Yeah, so my name's M-C-K-E-N-N-A-R-E-I-T-Z. And you can find me on all social media, just underneath my name, Instagram, uh, just at McKenna Writes. You can find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitter. I'm, you know, pretty much everywhere. I not much on Snapchat because that's all the kids are doing these days and I'm no longer <laughs> a kid. Uh, but no, I, you know, I thank you for creating such an amazing space, which is such an important space for people just to continue learn, learning from other people and hearing that they're not alone. And, you know, understanding that they too can get through whatever their challenge is, whether it's past, present or future, they are strong enough and you're creating this space for them. So I, I thank you for allowing me to share my story and to, you know, help, help one more person out. Thank you for sharing that, how you realize that your superpower was your superpower and how it took what it took to get there, but that it was already in you. It was already there. It has now been brought to the surface probably faster than what it would have been if you hadn't had this. Um, I'm grateful for you. Thank you for teaching this valuable um, life lesson of love and patience and endurance. I love that thought of, hey, you made it to the couch today? Hey, high five, girl. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Good for you. You didn't, you didn't go out and shop today. You stayed in your PJs all day, but you got up. There are going to be moments where we all go through that, but tie yourself to the people, tie yourself to the things, tie yourself to the songs, to the music, share your story, find out what your superpower is now and change the world through who you really are. Thanks, McKenna. Thank you.